Game three between How Dare You and RTG. He, RTG is going to be starting as the purple Terran, bottom left hand corner, upper right hand corner. We have How Dare You as the green Zerg, and this is going to be a special one because this is going to be the first dual commentary I've done in quite some time. I have Moltrap alongside. What's up, internet? It is Moltrap, and yeah, I, I, uh... I've done a couple with Rise recently, but you and I haven't done a dual cast in like a decade? Maybe a decade. Pretty close I to think. that. The one trouble for this is we don't have like a, you're looking at stream, we don't have like a full shared view where you're locked to my observer view to where you would be able to see precisely what I am looking at on screen. So we'll have to work around that a little bit. So you'll have to throw signals out there to be like, this is what I'm looking at right this second and then I'll move to that. But to catch you up on what's happening in here, it is one game apiece. Whoever wins this is going to move on to... So this is a loser's match. They'll move on to the final match, and whoever loses is going to be eliminated. Looks like we have RTG setting a, a contain, bottom left-hand corner. I think he ended up losing in the first round because often... I think this was... I hope I'm not mixing it up with someone else because he wasn't walling in. This is on Eclipse, by the way. Mixing up players' names? How dare you? Nice. Speaking of which, how dare you did the drone extractor trick and he's going ahead and grabbing an overlord. Also moving a drone very rapidly off that nine to make sure he gets scouting information into RTG's base. Yeah, so uh, my apologies to the viewers that uh, I am not like completely caught up to date on what's going on with this series, but I'll let Diggity lead the way as far as the general context and I will uh, just talk about what I'm seeing on screen, I guess, in general. So. But yeah, this is exciting. It's good to cast with you and Diggity. And um, <laughs> literally like three minutes ago, Diggity was like, hey, you want to dual cast this? And I was like, dot, dot, dot. Why not? So uh, here we are. Um, but yeah, it looks like uh, we're just going to see some normal stuff. Now, this is a kind of a weird map with the like divided thing, but it plays out pretty standardly. You've probably seen this map a lot more, though, Diggity. Is there anything that we need to think about in terms of TVZ that usually plays out on this map in the games that you've been seeing? Mostly, I think it's been a little bit... I mean, cheese has been opened up here and there because of the map features. I do want to point out that TNG has open, has opened up with a refinery, and he's got three SCV and gas, so probably going to see a factory build. I'm almost wondering if we're going to see 111 again. We did see a tank opening last time, which was a bit odd. Spawning pool and extractor being built in the meantime. Also, SCV has managed to get scouting information in the base. This is Eclipse, which I don't know if this is Zerg favorite or not. It's kind of, it's a ladder map. It's been a little bit more popular, I think, overall. I feel like it's kind of in the ilk of current maps that people feel are fairly balanced and are pretty happy with. It's not a four-player map, and I feel like most players like, I love the four-player maps. Because it lets me macro and get in the mid-game, by the way, only a single SCV on gas right now. So this is going to be, I guess, factory into expand. Or maybe, I don't know. We'll have to see what RTG's got up his sleeve. This almost looks like a versus Protoss build, though, initially. Yeah, I mean, it does have the factory... Uh about two-thirds completed at this point in time. And, you know, this is a, a good map, I think. I haven't seen a ton of games on this map, but I've seen some. And it, it seems to be a good map for, for mech play, if that's what he wants to go for. There's these small ramps that are really, really easy to hold. And, but that can go for lurkers as well, you know? If you can put, you know, two lurkers on the top of that little ramp, no amount of bio is going to get up that ramp. So that might be something a factor as well. Wow. And uh, the Overlord, by the way, in the natural, just barely escaping detection and might have gotten hunted down by those marines which are pushing across the map pretty early here he's trying to put on some pressure um yeah and uh force is sunken uh with absolutely zero zerglings produced moving the two marines across the map it looks like this is like some version of a 111 we see the vulture being produced making its way across we already have a sunken colony so with a bit of drone blocking on the ramp should be able to stop that extractors up looks like we're going to see two hatch i assume mutalisk because we have not seen a hydralisk den just yet the Marines coming back now that they forced a sunken colony. The SCV died on the front line. The Zergling is probably going to get picked off in the midfield as, yeah, the Vulture, ooh, taking a lot of damage, a little bit unnecessarily, and remicroing. Keep, keep in mind, both these players are probably playing uh, in some considerable lag. Command Center being built. Barracks moved forward to provide some defense. The one thing with this build is without a, wow, going to factory against Spire, this might be just a build order win for How Dare You. Yeah, um, we do have the armory being constructed in the bottom left corner of the base, and so it's possible that he'll be able to fight this off with Goliath, theoretically, when these Mutalists do pop out, but um, yeah, getting the expansion, getting the tech, not, crucially, not getting turrets? Okay, engineering bay now going up as well, so 
It's going to be a very, very close timing. The Spire is about half complete, a little bit more. So he does have like a good two minutes before the Spire completes, the Mutalists pop out, the Mutalists fly across the map. Can he squeeze in enough turrets and Goliaths to fend things off? I think probably the case, but he's going to need to start building those turrets pretty quickly if he's going to hold off the, the air push. Otherwise, he could just get overrun, as you said. Yeah, my concern is, is okay, it looks like that 12 o'clock base has been taken, uh, Vulture working away against that. My concern here is, is that, yeah, he's got... You upgraded mines, he's got two Goliaths on the ground. Usually you have a whole bunch of Marines to deal with the Mutalisks coming out. We did see a bunch of gas being saved to build a whole bunch of Mutalisks. So five Mutalisks on the way, and five Mutalisks should be able to take out, especially with depending on mobility. Basically, I feel like RTG to survive this is going to need to put down way more turrets than he wants to in the mid game. And the Hydralisk then should allow for Hydralisk follow up. Also, weapons one, so big dedication to this. The Hydralisk then should be able to follow up and deal with any sort of attack on that additional hatchery, but. Honestly, and all oh, with the Goliaths and the Marines moving outside of the base, with another Sunken Colony on the front, how dare you can just run straight into the main, do all sorts of economic damage, and proceed from there. It looks like he's going to move, move the Mutalists to the north, though, to take care of that initial Vulture. The Goliaths scattering from there. They need to get back to home base rapidly. A couple mines planted, uh, just a single, a couple Zerglings can be able to clear that up. But at the main, yeah, I see two turrets to the north, two turrets along the along the natural, but I just don't think it is going to be enough with just a handful of Goliaths and Marines as far as something that's mobile. Yeah, well, I mean, it looks like he's probably going to plan on playing a more macro-based game is what I'm imagining here as far as, you know, he's just kind of getting the defenses. He's going to have to uh, sit back on his turrets, essentially, for a little while while he gets his forces up a little bit longer. But I do feel like he is pretty safe. He's got four turrets in the main, Three turrets in the natural as well. Uh, a handful of Goliaths to support that and a few Marines. Um, I feel like it's probably, he's probably gonna be able to defend if the Mutalists come and attack. Uh, the question is, what is he gonna do after that? And so likely he's gonna be defending for a little while while he gets his tech up, while he gets his mech up, and while he gets the heck up. I don't know, I was trying to go for three things that rhymed, but uh, <laughs> either way, He's going to be moving out on a timing a little bit later on is what I'm thinking while he kind of defends. He's been pushing out of the map and falling back and pushing out and falling back. And he's been doing a very good job. Uh, R what'd you say? R RTG. You RTG. RTG. Ratatata TNG. Yeah, he's been doing a good job of putting a little bit of pressure on but not putting his units at risk. So he hasn't actually lost any uh, very few Marines and, and, and whatever out in the field. Only a couple of Vultures have actually died. And so I feel like he's been able to macro up his army pretty well. And he's actually getting a third and fourth factory right now, too. So he is definitely committing to yeah, he's, kind of a mid-game timing push is what I'm looking at. I think he's got one shot, which is to build a bajillion Goliaths and push out and let reinforcing Goliaths fend off Mutalisks that might be attacking the main huge clump of Mutalisks above the natural more Mutalisks being produced. It looks like it's just mostly going to be Mutaling. Level 1 weapons is about to kick on, uh, kick in, and I think as soon as level 1 weapons is there, he's going to start diving into the main and doing the attacks there. The, pro the thing for RTG, though, is he needs to make a hard dedication one direction or the other. Um, Mutalisks moving in right now. With the Goliath's force on the ground, Mutalisks diving in on top of that factory line. He's got to keep the Goliath back, but while he's doing all this, as long as How Dare You keeps up with his macro, he's not going to be able to apply any pressure otherwise. Look, ooh, is that turret going to burn down? SCV trying to get there, does not get there in time. And so basically these Mutalisks provide the threat that force the Goliaths to stay back. And while that's happening, he's teching to Hive and pretty much doing whatever he wants across the map. He could probably take another expansion. He's got another creep colony to probably defend that. He's already oh, going to Greater Spire. Interesting. Going to Greater Spire, nice. plopping some additional creep colonies at the 12 o'clock. So the Goliaths, basically, yeah, I feel like they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Either... They're not mobile, so they either need to defend the main and prevent that from happening, at which point, how dare you can just expand absolutely everywhere, or they need to go for a big pressure attack, and when they do that, you're just sacking the main. And really, between the Sunken Colonies and just reinforcements that I think how dare you would be able to produce in the form of Zerglings and Hydralis, he should be able to fight that off as long as he's not getting caught with his pants down and has a sufficient larva. I feel like the key here for RTG is uh, going to be to prevent the fourth base from getting up and getting defended, which is difficult on this map. You do have some Mutalist Grass down at the natural, by the way, picking off a lot of SCVs. And this is kind of what I was thinking is that you get to a certain point where your force is large enough that you present enough of a threat that the offense is the defense, that moving out onto the map with this giant force of Goliaths is going to force the Mutalists to come home instead of harassing. And it, how dare you seize this? 
And a little bit late of a response, actually. Getting his Mutalist back, he may not have them back in time. Now, is RTG going to actually commit to this attack? Which might be disastrous with the amount of Sunkens, and you definitely cannot get up the ramp into the third base at all. So, in fact, he is going to turn around. He put that pressure on, he drew the Mutalisks back, and now the Mutalisks are going back in as the Goliaths have fallen back. And it looks like he's hunting for that fourth base, which is what I was thinking. He needs to keep that fourth base from getting up. Once the fourth base gets up and he gets a couple sunks and maybe a couple lurkers on the ramp, you can't break it anymore. And then he's going to be too far behind economically. I think right now he does have an opportunity where he does have the army superiority, where RTG can control the flow of the game. He needs to turn that into a long-term advantage, though. So RTG just, I think, out, out macroing, how dare you, which has kept his count. He's got 105 supply versus 78. There are a lot of latent defenses and creep colonies. And while that's happening, guardians that have morphed in are now diving on that natural expansion. Here's the thing. This natural expansion goes down. RTG in a huge amount of trouble. You really, really, really need two gas and two expansions to keep mech going. Immediately lifting the command center. So not mining here. And he's got to clear. Basically, he needs the Goliaths to clear these guardians out and it looks like they are going to be able to get down here but in these close quarters no actually I take it back charm booster has been upgraded didn't think it was upgraded just yet picking off several guardians now the guardians from that safe area trying to to ping back at this but that's a lot of economic disruption looks like he's trying to do a surround here both directions that engineering bay providing some spotting and those guardians might be pinned in here Although, I don't know, I don't feel like it's a pin-in, because it's like, okay, they can go ahead. Well, can they be hit from that corner? They can be hit from that corner. Wow. Yeah, it looks like there's a spot. There's just not enough of a spot. He can't get to a spot where the Guardians, I'm sorry, the Goliaths can't hit them from both from either side. Oh, maybe he's, oh, he's found one, one tiny spot where those Guardians can chill there. But they're going to float out of the area. He's going to have to babysit them. They're just, they're going to die eventually. Um, so that's going to be a big rip on that. He did get the Charon boosters actually earlier on, very immediately after he got the armory. Um, and uh, he actually got plus one armor on his uh, mech as well. So he's been able to kind of keep up with the upgrades as far as the Zerg attacks have gone. But um, yeah, at the very least though, those Guardians did keep... I mean, they, they kept the Goliaths back. The Goliaths had to fall back to deal with them. They did some economic damage, but uh, in the meantime, he lost, what was that, eight guardians? Eight That's guardians, a, a bunch of mutalists, of yeah. Money. That's a lot of money, and the mutalists, and the mutalists in there as well. So he lost a lot of money there, and how dare you has not been able to expand in the meantime either. Yeah, that's the critical thing is, is even though how dare you, it looks like some I missed another guardian attack from the north. Um, even though, and it, it, you can see RTG is moving up to the nine o'clock. He's, I think he's just like, you know, okay, if you're going to play it this way, I'm just going to starve you out. There is hive tech up. More Mutalists diving in. There was another round of Mutalists and a couple Zergans being produced. Now working on that engineering bay to try to deny vision to, uh, again, maybe allow Guardian harassment from that northern corner. The Goliaths trying to get back in position, try to defend that natural expansion. The engineering bay is down, which is going to prevent additional turrets from being produced. But yeah, here's the thing. How dare you is turning him, it's, he's turning this into about a bit of a starvation match, which he will lose overall because now RTG has that nine o'clock base. He's still sitting on three. His main is okay, but he's building very expensive units. He's building guardians. He's build, building mutalisks. Those aren't the typical cheap, efficient trading units. And he's kind of in that predicament where, okay, you need to stop. You need to get expansions up. You need to stop your opponent from getting expansions up and you need to keep your own macro going. And I feel like he's failed to do that thus far behind in the overall supply count. Plus, that's a bunch of siege tanks and mech moving across the middle of the map, and only Zerglings to greet them. Yeah, and they are going to <laughs> be greeted in return with lots of bullets and uh, be having to force back. This might be the end of the game in about 30 seconds or so, um, if this push continues to go forward. But at the same time, the Guardians have re-attacked the natural expansion here. And never mind, RTG turning back around. I think he could have marched into the natural and killed How Dare You if this pressure had not come out at this moment. But instead, he's turning around. I think he knows he needs to kind of defend this a little bit. His main's going to mine out soon. He does have the third base being harassed as well by more Guardians. So right now, RTG is barely mining at this very moment. Um, he does have the forces to come back and deal with these Guardians and get himself back in a mining position. But it's, it's time that it's, he's not killing How Dare You, basically. I, our, how Dare You needs to be getting, like, two other bases right now, though. He's, he's not expanding. He's got 2,000 minerals in the bank. He just used those, make some drones and hatcheries, and he could be expanding around the map. So I think you're right that his macro is just the part that's, that's killing him here. I think... 
It'll be okay though, because the Guardians, yeah, he lost all those Guardians, but the SCVs were back in transition, back to the main, trying to, because both command centers were lifted off, and he ended up losing uh, all of his wow, SCVs. So he's SCV down to 13, now. yeah, 33 to 13. 13 he's SCVs. losing the nine o'clock base now to some Mutalisks and Zerglings. And now, yeah, RDG has this big beefy army that maybe he can dive into the natural expansion with, but he is, his economy is completely shredded in the meantime. Yeah, he's 16 SCVs now. He's got no money in the bank at all. How dare you has a lot of money in the bank. Only 33 drones is actually not very many drones really either exactly, but I mean, I guess it's, you know, it's, I guess it's kind of normal for a Zerg, uh, you know, have about 11 drones per base. But um, either way, his economy is not doing great, but it's doing better than RTG. And I think RTG, I think this is the, the desperate last ditch counterattack. Nope. Never mind, he's turning around again. He needs to get a move on because defilers are going to be out in the field momentarily. And once that, that swarm is out, those Goliaths are going to be absolutely worthless. Absolutely worthless. Yeah. And the Zerglings with their adrenal upgrade, and it looks like Carapace and level 1 melee weapons are being upgraded uh, there as well. <laughs> Wraith actually out there. Uh, that'll be it. There are some siege tanks working on the creep colonies at the natural expansion, but Consume is just about finished. So I think How Dare You probably has won this as long as he can get he's down a little bit low on supply here but as long as he can get a defiler and some zerglings to deal with the just coat this in all sorts of dark swarm and move those zerglings out he should be okay he, he should be if he can get this out he's currently making one defiler um which worries me a little bit if he can get that defiler out in just a moment he will be able to plant down a swarm on this natural expansion protect it the defiler is moments from hatching but if he picks off that defiler before it gets the swarm down uh, RTG is just going to take the game. He's only made this one Defiler. Where is it? It's in the main. It's finally hatched out. The Wraith is on top of it. Is he going to be able to get swarmed down? He's going to lose the natural in the meantime, but can he defend this? It's going to be really, really tough to defend this. The Defiler is under attack by Goliath in the main. The only Defiler he made just dies to Goliath fire without casting a single spell. And <laughs> it doesn't matter if you have an economy if you don't have a base. And right now, how dare you not have Oof. a base. What a turnaround. It seemed like if he had just had that Defiler like five seconds earlier, would have been in place to cast some Dark Swarm instead, losing all of his base, and I think that's going to be game. I think that's it. And unfortunately, we're going to see RTG, well, fortunately for RTG, he's going to move on to the final match, but how dare you going to get eliminated? And I feel like he put together some nice matches. I really want to see, <laughs> this is kind of the greedy part, having uh, going to cast the rest of BSL. I like seeing more Zerg in this and fewer turns. <laughs> And Zerg eliminated overall. Let's get let's get some of those Protoss eliminated so there's no more PvP. The round oh actually we do see some Dark Swarm in the natural expansion with some Zerglings, but I think it's just too little too late. There's only eight drones left. Uh, lifted off command center right there, and the Goliaths just have to yeah, meander their way out, wait for that defiler to be exposed or out of energy, just keep picking away those Zerglings. Honestly, those SCVs could probably turn around and fight and probably win the game right here. But because it's elimination, how dare you just trying to use every last bit that he's got. Yeah, I think RTG, you know, he's suffering a little bit of some losses here at the end. And a couple more Guardians even coming into the natural there. But it's just a matter of time before he cleans this up. I do feel like RTG is going to be able to pull back out of this very well. Because now, if we look at the worker count, how dare you has eight drones. Eight drones is, is not enough to beat a giant mech army. When he also doesn't, I mean, he's got 17 supply. He's just kind of, like you said, he's kind of hanging on. Just because you might as well put your last ditch effort into it, and that was a—it was a nice little move. Guardians, Dark Swarm, Cracklings, and the Natural. You know, maybe if he shut down the Natural and the main was mined out, then you know he, he gets a more stalemate position and he can pull out of it. But um, uh, RTG was just able to recover a little bit too well. Brought enough forces back to deal with that, and now he's turning back around to go back across the map to kill that last remaining base. Of how dare you? And there's not a lot. How dare you can do about it? He just finished rebuilding his spawning pool. Yeah, died in the main, if, so, he, uh, if he still had his Defiler Mound, he might have been able to hold this ad infinitum. This is still going to be difficult to take without some, some Siege Shank to support, but the Siege Shank should be there momentarily. And in the interim, how dare you can, or sorry, RTG can just basically expand wherever he wants to expand. Sneaky expansion, upper left, there is a Marine on top of that already, so that's not going to last very long. Siege Tank's all over there. <laughs> I guess it's over. The comment in chat, and that is affirmative. Yeah, yeah, shelled up. Sometimes if you're if you're if you know your hive is gonna die, you want to rebuild your hive tech units in another base immediately before the hive dies. 
I actually see even pro gamers fail to do that a lot of the time. Um, you know, sometimes it's just two people that have 30 guardians. <laughs> it's over. Um, but yeah, so he, he had an opportunity to kind of rebuild over there. And imagine right now, yeah, he has a defiler. And he puts a swarm down on that ramp, sends some zerglings down it. You know, he could theoretically try and pull back out of this. But again, with, with six drones, you know, there's not a lot you can do. There's the GG coming from How Dare You. Well played by RTG. Well done. All right. Thank you for the dual commentary, Moltrap. Do you want to do one more? Sure. Let's All right. Go for it. Dive into one more. Thanks for listening, everybody.